time. You know, their kids, you know, if they're younger, their kids have basketball, soccer. They have a all job. All kinds of sports. They have a job. Three people in the you family know, working. How many jobs, how many people work, you know, Saturdays and Sundays? Yeah. Right now in Pennsylvania, they got a big brouhaha, the opening Sunday hunting. A lot of people, that's the only day they have off is Sunday. And, you know, is it going to take away from church? I doubt it. I think, you know, probably TV and the computers have done that. But, you know, we've got we've gotten away from our traditions of hunting a lot. And that's kind of sad. It's uh, part of Americana that's kind of going away. We went from, okay, we, you know, my dad went deer hunting is because, I mean, I grew up on a farm. We had meat, but he wanted the deer meat. He didn't go out to get a big rack or anything like that. He kind of like what I do now. I want a nice rack and a nice sized deer. And I want the meat. I like the meat. You know, those days are gone. How many people, and part of it's our education system, go, oh, how can you eat Bambi? Bambi was put on this earth by God for us to eat, whether we like it yeah, or not. Right. Well, you know, another interesting, uh, uh, another interesting thing about all that is uh, the... Uh, the money that goes to these licenses, as you pointed out, it's supposed to go to, go to conservation. Only like now 20%. they're taking all of it and they're dumping it into the regular budget. Goodbye, your conservation money. Uh, your license money is being stolen by the state and it's going in for the welfare down in New York. Can't believe it. Well, that's, that's uh, one thing I like about a lot of the other states. When you buy a hunting or fishing license, it goes right into Fish Commission or Game Commission. I don't like our system. But we're never going to change it. There's not enough hunters to say, hey, look, you know, let's do this. Yeah, they say we've got X number of licenses we sold and everything else, but to be a powerful lobbying group, it's not there. But let's get back to some of the tricks I use. Yeah, how do you get your deer? Okay, after you've established a good rapport with the landowner, one of the important things is scouting. Now, myself, I'll go out. I like to go out five, six, even 10, 12 times. I'll go squirrel hunting. Because I like squirrel. They're good to eat, whether you like it in Westfield or not. Kind of nutty. <laughs> yeah, they're actually very sweet. And they as are, my wife yeah. says, they make the best gravy of anything you could ever eat. Huh. But, uh, and while I'm out there, I look for deer sign, like uh, rubs. Uh, What's this a time, rub? What's uh, a rub? They'll take a tree when they're getting rid of their uh, velvet on the uh, antlers, and they'll rub their antlers on it to get that velvet off. So that's a sign they're around. That's a sign that there's a buck around, and mm -hmm. usually it's figured the bigger the tree they rub, mm -hmm. the bigger the rack they have. Mm. Now like now you also actually look for what they call scrapes, where they're in the rut and they're breeding. So they'll scrape all the leaves away and the buck will urinate so the does will come in that are in estrus and they'll have an idea that they're there, so they come back. It's a marking territory thing. They sell that you heard, don't they? Oh yeah, they they bottle this stuff up. I've used it a couple times. Uh -huh. One year I had good success with it. I took some and uh, I hung it up in a tree, and I had a buck come in, and he was just snorting and pounding his feet. It was it was rather comical, really. Uh -huh. But for the most part, <clears throat> the only thing I do is I pick up. Pick out a good spot, which after hunting this area all this time, there's a few different spots that I have. Usually they're by a run off to the side, and you got to wait. Now, a lot of guys will use scents and camouflage. Well, that's part of the deal is using different smells, including well, the, the piss and the, uh, right. the estrus and all these other things. Well, it draws the deer to you, right. right? Supposedly. Yeah. Yeah, but they use like... Uh, Scent blocking clothes and this stuff. Now, and all I really salt do, sometimes. Yeah, salt. <laughs> you put works. out a salt lick. You're Mineral guaranteed. block. Yeah. Yeah, that's illegal, isn't it? Yep. Yep. And you can't actually feeding the deer in New York City. You can't like corn them. You, can, you used to be yeah. able to throw a lot of corn out there. You know they'd be there in the morning. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, me, my, I wear an orange jacket, uh -huh. and I've had deer pass within five yards of me, not knowing they're there. Well, they're I, I tend to think they, they can distinguish blue, uh -huh. so you don't want to wear blue jeans. Yeah. If you do. Have some kind of coveralls covered up, you know, to get rid of that blues. And I guess from one show I watched, they can differentiate between like red and yellow. Uh -huh. But uh, basically, they're a colorblind animal. Yeah, that, they detect and, movement yeah. and sound. I mean, if you ever and look smell. at their ears, smell. Uh, smell huh? you can mask. I, uh -huh. I go out where I stand. Uh -huh. Like I said, a lot of guys will use, you know, scent blocking. So I go out and I take the dirt where I'm standing uh -huh. and I kick it up. 
I just take that dirt and I'll make an area probably that big around where I'm standing mm -hmm. that I kick off the leaves and I, I uh, dig the dirt up and kick it around. And, you know, actually, even with our poor sense of smell, you can smell the dirt. Uh -huh. But that's the way I do it. And so that overcomes your odor. Right. It, which is it a big minimalizes. And I'll keep, during the day while I'm hunting, I'll keep doing it. Well, there's an old rumor that uh, the reason you find often you find deer with turkeys is the turkeys have incredible sight and they yeah. have wonderful color, but they have no smell. So yeah. they protect each other. But, uh, no, and, you know, you got to do what makes you comfortable. The more comfortable and the more confident you are in your hunt, the better off you're going to be as far as getting a deer. Well, how I about mean, sitting unmoving for hours? That's what they tell me is the secret. Uh, you know what? I know a lot of guys go up in trees. I, even when I was younger, didn't like the tree thing. I like, you know, good old ground. Mm -hmm. uh, I go out, and a lot of guys be out there like 5 in the morning be up in their tree waiting. I go out and I've shot probably, oh, probably 10, at least 10 buck. I go in when it gets light and I just, I kind of mosey, I just take my time and I'll see a deer, you know, I'll put the gun and the scope up on it and see whether it's buck or doe. I don't know how many times I've done. I've had one year where I went and I think it was a six point. Now that I'm thinking about it. I went out, it was just light. I walked out, it was going, getting down to the edge of the woods, and here was this deer just walking along as nice as could be. Bang, I was done. Dragged it to the truck, got it, got it out. I got home, my wife was like, I thought you were going deer hunting. Yeah. <laughs> I am, I'm done, honey. I'm done. You know, <laughs> and I mean, that's me. But other guys get in the woods at 5 o'clock, they're at their stand, and they're comfortable. That's the way they're confident doing their deer hunting. I mean, that's a lot of it. You know, any kind of hunting or fishing, confidence in what you're doing. Right. Well, it's the biggest thing. How about the driving? You hear about the drive. How, what is that all about? What they do is you get a bunch of guys and they'll uh -huh. take a section of woods. Now, you can do it like uh, down around the lake shore where there's little plots of woods, you know, maybe 5, 10, maybe 15 acres. And you get a bunch of guys on one end and another bunch on the other end. The guys on the one end walk through the woods making noise to push the deer out to the guys on the other end. Uh, when I was younger, I used to do it. And it's, I don't know, now it's kind of like, if you want to do it, fine, but it's, I'm not comfortable with that. And sometimes the guys get a little overzealous when they're doing that. Because there's a lot of adrenaline running about, okay, you know, it's not like when you're standing there and, you know, you kind of keep watching here and there and here and there, and all of a sudden you see the little movement in the deer. This is like, okay, you're waiting for deer to come busting out. And you and usually have the, the shooters posted along a trail, right? Yeah, the well, usually if you, they'll usually block off the one end. Uh -huh. So if you have a square patch of woods, they start at one end, drive it through to the other end. And like I said, a lot of times, too, the deer are moving quick. You can make some bad shots where the deer is just wounded. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you know, it's one of those things if somebody's comfortable doing it, I've got no problem with it. But I, my personal thing is, no, because I'd rather be out in the woods have that deer walk up to me with no excitement and drop it so you don't have the adrenaline getting into the meat, which, you know, affects the taste of the meat too. Sure. Well, we have a, a little cabin with a heater on it. And now things have changed dramatically with the coming of the electronic age. Uh, everybody has a four tracker now, uh, you know, one of those little wheelies she, that goes yeah. in, and everybody has a cell phone. You get your deer, you don't have to drag it for four hours and have a heart attack. All you do is pick your cell phone up, ring the person in the cabin, bring up the four tracker, they ring it up, load your deer on, away <laughs> you go. <laughs> yeah, That's I'm, a big change, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm still the traditionalist. I, you like to I, haul it out? <laughs> yeah, it takes me a while. You know, and, uh, I the, old ticker, the old ticker can go too, well, you know, at your age. <laughs> that, well, that's why you got to keep the ticker in shape. <laughs> yeah, right. Do the best you can. Uh -huh. But, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I don't like, like a few years ago, where I hunt, I'm allowed to bring a friend. I brought a friend up. <coughs> and some guys came up there with a four-wheeler, and he was just laughing his tail off. They flipped it and oh, everything okay. else. And they went out, the farmer who owns the property, they went out his driveway. And I was talking to him, and he says, no, there's nobody has permission on there except you. You know, tell him to leave. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, right. You got four guys with guns and one guy with guns. The, the numbers just aren't good. I mean, <laughs> he had one year. 
Now this, this is why some of the farmers post. At one year, across the drive, there was a no posted sign. These people parked, mind you, parked their vehicle in the end of that drive hmm. and went in hunting. Well, the guy was trimming his grapes, and these guys were shooting, and he could hear whiz. That's a problem. And he says, well, why don't you go down? He says, if you see these guys there, go down and tell them to leave. I said, well, how many there were? Jack went, oh, a few guys. And I thought to myself, boy, I'd love to, because by rights, you know, they don't have permission. They shouldn't be there. But you're thinking, if they've got guts enough to park at that sign, and there's, you know, at that time, I use my muzzle loader a lot. I mean, even during the regular season. I thought, I'm going to go down there, and there's going to be three or four guys with shotguns who don't care about being illegal anyway. Who, and you, know, you hear all these stories from Michigan and Minnesota where these guys get shot on their property because they tell guys to leave. So you kind of, you know, you're a little leery of it. But, you know, it's, I don't know, some people are so, I don't know whether you call it desperate or what to get a deer, but they don't care. Well, uh, these people are... Definitely should be arrested and put in jail, I might add, because they're breaking the law, but they're very dangerous. Yeah, you know, I mean, and, and they roll it for the good guys. It's like anybody else. You know, you got guys, you know, they're out there shooting deer illegally and stuff. It's it's not good. You well, know, I had a friend who uh, was protecting his property and the neighbor's property because they were in there illegally hunting some guy, and he went out to him. The guy had a gun on his hand, so he took his gun and uh, he, he unholstered his pistol. He didn't point it at him. He said, I want you off the property. The guy wouldn't go. You know, they later arrested him for threatening them with a guy with, a, with his gun. I mean, what the hell's going on here? Well, it's like when we had the farm, I was hunting one day, and this was after we posted it. We went around, find, found the surveyor's stake, did it all legal, signed all the signs and everything else. Mm -hmm. So I was hunting, and a guy came up to me. He says, you know, you're on private property. I says, yeah. He says, well, don't you think you better get off? I says, I don't see why. It's my, my farm. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, it wasn't a week later, the friend of mine that hunted on the farm was mm -hmm. hunting, and these guys came in and said, you're on private property. <laughs> and they were, they were guys at a camp from Buffalo. Uh -huh. And he went, mm, yeah, I know. Well, you're not allowed on here. It's posted. He goes, yeah, I know. I helped Don post it. So <laughs> I ended up going up to their camp and telling them, hey, you know what? Because usually on the farm after the first day, I didn't care if anybody went on. And I said, you guys stay off. You know, two strikes, you're not getting a third. But, you know, and that, and that hurts everybody. You can't blame a person for when they have incidents like that. Right, the farmer can't To go, I don't want anybody on there unless I know them. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, like I said, when we were talking, it, deer hunting. Oops. We're out of here. Whoa. We just go, I'm sorry, we're out of here. To cl close up, give you 30 seconds. Go okay, ahead. well. The week from today starts deer season for us gun hunters. I mean, the archery Next hunters. Next Saturday, the 19th, 19th at, at sunrise. sunrise. But uh, that's a you know that's a local holiday up here. It, it's been a holiday <laughs> with me since I was 12 years old. But uh, if you enjoy it, get out there. You know, know your equipment, know where you're going, know the landowner. If you get a deer, take care of it properly. Whether it's taking it to the processors right away or doing it yourself and processing it yourself. Take care of the meat. If you don't want it, there's a donation program. You can call a county clerk. I think it's also in your uh, your uh, DEC book for hunting and, and trapping. And I think the one guy that does some of the processing is up in Panama. I think it's Troyer. Yeah. But enjoy it. Be respectful of the other hunters. Be respectful of the property owner. And just and have that, a good time and enjoy John nature. Patooch. John Vitucci, thank you. Our field and dream stream and, uh, editor, will you come back and talk about fishing shortly? That's oh, yeah, ice be, fishing's you, coming up. Ice fishing coming up. Don't fall in. <laughs> Been okay. there, done that. <laughs> uh, I wanna, sorry, last caller, we didn't get you. We'll get you next time. He'll be back. I want to thank really special, wonderful people. Chuck Kelsey, Devin Taylor, Chris Burt, Randy Burt, Chris Ramaker, Jeff Sook, Don Zenz, John Hamels, and everybody else who's out there helping out and listening and watching. Have a great day great week. May all that is proud and true and noble be with you. I'm Reed Powers wishing you happy hunting. <laughs>